let me show you how to recover unexposed images like this using just a bit of Lightroom. Feel free to follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's jump into it. So this is our raw file. It's quite heavily underexposed and the reason why I did it this way is because I was shooting a long exposure and long exposure plus HDR does not work well. So I have to fix that using a single exposure. And that's easier to do with an underexposed shot since we can fix underexposure relatively easily. But you can see there are some very bright highlights. Those right here are the reason I can't make this image brighter in camera. Luckily for us, that's kind of easy to fix. First off, we want to jump into the basic adjustments. We can use different profiles to begin this. I'm going with Adobe Landscape since this will bring us some very nice saturation, but it will also help make the darker areas a little brighter. If you want to make your life a little easier when thinking about the exposure, you could also go with Adobe Neutral. As you can see, this kind of brightens up the darkest parts quite a lot while also remain remaining details in the brightest parts. But I want to have more saturation, so I'm going with Adobe Landscape. So how do we fix an underexposed image like this? The first thing I always do is to just raise the exposure until we get to a point where pretty much most of the image looks fine. So right here, I'm completely ignoring those bright parts in the sky. I'm just looking for a spot where the rest of the image, especially the foreground, looks good. I would say that's right about here. Raising the exposure this much will lead to problems. If we zoom in, you can see there's a ton of noise being introduced because of the raised exposure. And of course, the areas in the sky are now blown out. But we can fix the overexposure in the sky by simply bringing down the highlights. And right at this point, you can see we have a pretty good exposure without too much underexposure and no blown out skies. And that's exactly the reason for me to shoot this image as it was shot being rather underexposed. If it would be the other way around with tons of overexposure in the sky, we could not fix it by bringing down the exposure slider. Now take a look at the histogram. You can see Lightroom is indicating some underexposure still going on in this image. We can nicely fix that by raising the shadows. Again, this will introduce more noise in the darkest parts, but don't worry about that for now. I also want to bring up the blacks. I'm going to raise them quite a bit, which helps tremendously for this image. It also makes everything look a little bit softer since we kind of reduce the contrast overall. I think for a sunset scene like this, it looks really, really good this way. So I want to keep it like this. Now exposure wise, I'm quite happy, especially looking at the histogram. It, it's nicely stretched over the whole tonal range. So what I want to do next is to add a little bit of texture, giving those smaller things in this image more detail. At the same time, I want to bring down the clarity just to improve that soft look. And I'm also going to bring down the dehaze for the same effect, kind of introducing a, an Orton Glow effect on top of this image. So that looks awesome already. We can further bring up the vibrance. I do want this image to be well saturated. So that's exactly what I want to do. Okay. Let's take a look at the before and after comparison. You can see exposure wise, it looks so much better. Zoomed out like this, we also don't see any problems with it. But as I said earlier, you can see zooming in, there is a ton of noise, which we need to fix at the later point. Colorwise, this also looks better in my opinion. I don't think we need much more contrast. However, I wanna play around with a bit of masking. So let's jump into the masking panel right here. And what I want to do first is to make the sky a little more interesting. Therefore, I'm going to use a simple linear gradient covering most of the dark sky. I don't want to affect those brighter areas above the mountains. And what I want to do here is to just add a lot of contrast, making the top part of the sky darker just right about here. I think that looks great. Then. I want to create a new mask and this time I'm going to choose the objects mask. And with that mask, I want to select the jetty in the foreground. Let's see, I want to try the rectangle select. 
Never tried it before. Let's see how this works. Uh, okay, this didn't work. Let's do it with the brush mode and I'm just going to roughly brush over the jetty. It's still not detecting everything. That's because the original raw file is way too dark, I think. So I want to just I just want to add another objects mask to this selection. Just keep on brushing over the jetty until we have everything nicely selected. At this point, we could also just use the brush tool, I guess, to select everything that's remaining here. And I want to subtract using the brush because there's a tiny area which don't need to be selected right here, but that should be good enough. What I want to do with that selection of the jetty is I want to introduce more brightness here, kind of separating that jetty from the rest of the image and thus just create some more depth. So I'm going to introduce some more whites to brighten up this thing. And I'm also going to add a bit of contrast just to give it more punch. So I think this looks great. I also think we don't need any more mask for this shot. So let's compare to before with just the basic adjustments and here with the masks applied. I kind of don't want to overdo it with masks. So from this point on, I want to jump into the color grading. Uh, let's see, I'm going to head into the color mixer first. Here I want to work on the hue, which means I'm going to bring down the orange hue very, very slightly. And doing this will just make the clouds look a little more reddish up in the sky. I think it looks quite better this way. We could also work on the blue part of the sky, which at the moment does have a very slight purple color cast, which happens quite a lot with sunset scenes like this. So if you want to fix that, use the purple hue slider and bring it down to the left. And for a stronger effect, you can bring down the blue hue as well, just like this. Now, I don't think I want to touch the saturation or luminance. What I want to do instead is to go into the color grading panel for the split toning, which as always works quite nice for sunset scenes like this. So we can make it really intense by working on the highlights first. And of course, we first need to set up the hue. I'm aiming for something very warm, somewhere in the orange range, right about here. And I'm going to pump up the saturation heavily. So by doing this, we are getting a really stylized sunset shot. We can balance the colors a little more by going into the mid-tones. And here, instead of a warm color tone, we can work with a cold color tone, kind of the opposite from the highlights. So first set up the hue. I'm going with a color like this and bring up the saturation. It's important to not go too crazy here because otherwise we lose all the warmth in the sky. Although I have to say this doesn't look too bad either. Anyway, what I have planned was to go with the saturation somewhere around here and have a subtle hint of blue in the mid-tones. And then finally, what we can do else for the colors is to head into the calibration tab here, I want to work on the blue primary hue and saturation, just bringing it down a notch, making those sunset colors more intense, and I'm going to bring up the saturation. And that's it. Then finally, we can work on the sharpness. Let's go into the details tab. I'm going to use the same settings as always. I'm starting by bringing down the radius, increase the details, add masking while holding down the Alt key so you can see where the sharpening is applied. And then I'm going to introduce a little more sharpening. That looks great. Now again about that noise problem. We really don't want to have that much noise going on in this image. And fortunately for us, we can easily fix that using Lightroom's new AI denoise. All we need to do for that is in the details panel, click on denoise. Lightroom will give you a preview window. Clicking on it, you get the before version and letting go of the mouse will give you the finished result. So as you can see right here in the jetty, we will lose a ton of color noise, which is great. However, there is a problem in very dark areas like this in the background. You can see some weird patterns appearing. I personally think that's not a big deal. I can live with that. So what I want to do is to just hit the enhance button. Depending on the system, this will take a while. And also some people suggest to do the AID noise right at the start of the editing, not at the end. 
To me, it's not much of a difference, but you might want to test it out which works better for you. And here we have the noise-free image. Looks so much better. Now, the only thing left to do is to do a little bit of cleaning. There's a weird spot somewhere right here, which I want to get rid of and a few other sensor spots. I'm going to do this in Photoshop. So let's go right click on the image, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. Right away, I'm going to hit Ctrl J to have a backup layer and I'm using the spot healing brush and I'm starting to just brush over everything that's bothering me. And here we have the finished image. So as you can see, fixing a heavily underexposed image like this can be quite easy with Lightroom, mostly due to the new AI noise reduction, which helps a lot doing this. So I guess if you have any questions left about the editing process or anything else, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.